I work part-time about two days a week, so I leave her there while I work. I didn't have any friends around until I sent my daughter there. Because my husband was transferred to a new place and we had to settle down far away from our hometown, it was hard for me to meet my close friends. It's hard to make friends, and now I have what people call mom friends, and I'm trying to be quiet to avoid trouble. Mom friends are a little different from normal friends. There are some groups at preschool, too. I try not to spend too much time with them, but it seems that some of them get into trouble. My personality is such that I don't like trouble, so I try to keep a low profile. So I never imagined that I would be involved in something like this. This happened just yesterday. I was feeding my daughter dinner when the phone rang. When I answered, it was from her preschool. Her teacher called me in a very angry tone. Hello? Oh, hello. Is this Ava's mom? Yes, thank you for always looking after my daughter. What's the matter? Please, you should know what the matter is. How long are you going to keep me waiting? Yes. Pick up. When are you coming? I can't believe you haven't come by this time. I turned pale when I heard what she said, because my daughter was right in front of me. I couldn't understand what she meant, so I asked her again. What do you mean by pickup? If it's Ava, she's already home. What are you talking about? I'm not talking about Ava. I was confused by the teacher's words. What? I said earlier that I only had one daughter. I was scared, but I decided to confirm it. Well, if it's not about Ava, who are you talking about? Are you sure you don't know? I'm talking about Mia. Mia? There was a child named Mia at the preschool, but of course she was not my child. But Mia is not my daughter, I told her. Then I heard the teacher sigh on the other end of the phone. Oh my, of course I understand that. But Amelia has been telling me for days that you were supposed to pick her up today. That's why I waited until this late. I was truly surprised when I heard what she said. I didn't remember her asking me to do that. It wasn't that I had forgotten, but that I had never been asked to do anything like that in the first place. That's what I explained to the teacher. Well, I didn't hear anything from Amelia. I think you should try calling her. I already tried calling her, but she didn't answer. She seems to have turned off her phone. So can you come and pick her up for the time being? What? I can't have her staying overnight at preschool, and I'm sure you just forgot about the promise you made. No, I really didn't make that promise. Anyway, please come over right now. I want to go home as soon as possible. Please. The teacher said that and hung up the phone. I wasn't sure what was going on, but I couldn't reach Amelia too, so I asked my husband to take care of my daughter and went to the preschool. I was so worried because I had no idea why Amelia did what she did. When I arrived, the teacher was waiting for me with a frustrated look on her face. So, you're here at last. Then I'll ask you to take Mia with you. Please bring Ava together tomorrow. That's all she said, and then she was gone. I went home with a lot of questions. Mia seemed fine, which was a relief. When I asked her what happened to her mother, she didn't seem to know. One of the biggest mysteries is that I can't get in touch with Amelia, but also, I've never been close with her. Amelia is known to be problematic among the moms. For example, she doesn't attend any parental events, she looks down on others, and so on. She's a kind of mom whose attitude is considered a problem, and she seems to stand out from everyone around her. That's why I hardly ever talk to her. I didn't understand why this was happening. I tried to contact Amelia several times that night until midnight, but her phone never connected. Mia had already gone to bed, so I gave up thinking there was nothing I can do about it and went to sleep too. The next day, I took Mia to the preschool with Ava, just like the teacher told me, and there was Amelia waiting for us with a nonchalant look on her face. Oh, good morning. Thank you very much for yesterday, Emma. Thanks for taking care of Mia. No problem, but I just want to confirm something. I don't remember promising to take care of Mia. Oh, that's right, but I thought you would take care of her. What? So you lied to the teacher then? I was very surprised last night when the teacher called me out of the blue. Well, I'm so glad to hear that you were able to take care of her safely. Mia seems to be fine, so I'm relieved. I don't think that's the problem here. 
I came here this morning just to see Mia's face. But can you pick her up on your way home today, too? My head hurt since Amelia showed no sign of being able to communicate with me at all. And I thought it was strange that she was asking me to pick her up day after day, so even I, normally tolerant, finally butted in. What? Today, too? I've actually started working, and I don't have anyone nearby to watch my daughter. What? What about your husband? He's on a business trip. He won't be back for a few months. That kind of opportunity doesn't come very often, so I thought I'd make some money and have a little fun. Even though you have Mia? I'm allowed to work even if I have a child, right? You also work part-time, so you know that, don't you, Emma? I understand that, but I don't want Mia to be alone at night. That's why I'm asking a mom friend to be with her. If you want to make some extra money, you don't have to work at night. But the pay is better at night, isn't it? I want to earn money quickly. If my husband comes home, I won't be able to go out whenever I want. And as a mother yourself, you understand how cramped housewives feel, don't you? Amelia was like this from beginning to end, pushing her own convenience on me. I have my own schedule, so it's difficult for me to take care of her every time you have to work. Oh, that's all right. I don't want to impose everything on you alone. I'm going to ask some of the others and have you take turns. Don't you feel sorry for Mia? No, she'll be fine. Mia's a very smart and good girl. She may be a bit naughty sometimes, but she's just a child, so that's natural. That's not the point. Oh no, it's already time. I'm meeting up with a friend. That's why I'll have to ask you to pick her up today. See you! What? Wait. I tried to stop her, but Amelia ran away. I told the preschool teacher what had happened. Can you please share that kind of thing with the moms and not me? The preschool can't take care of her. Also, I can't take care of her personally because other mothers might say that I'm favoring a child over another. Please understand. That's what she coldly said. So, Mia is at my house again tonight. She is certainly a good girl, and she gets along well with Ava. But to be honest, I'm worried of taking care of someone else's child. I don't even know if she has food allergies, so I have to keep an eye on her at all time. I tried to ask Amelia, but of course, her phone is turned off. I can't keep doing this forever. I thought about contacting Amelia's husband, but I don't have his contact information. And if I ask the preschool teacher for it, she'll probably say it's personal information. I can't seem to find a solution, so my mind is all over the place. It's hard for me to say I can't do something, even if I can't do it. And that's not a good trait I have. I've always had a tendency to not say no when people ask me for something. So that's why I'm caught up in things like this. I'm discussing with my husband right now to see if there's anyone else I can ask to talk to about this. I can't just leave it like this. I'm not sure if other moms will be affected if I refused. Anyway, I'll think about it some more. I'll see what I can do to help Mia. I talked it over with my husband afterwards, and we decided that it wasn't good to keep her here for so long, so we went to talk to the principal. I managed to get around the other teachers and approached the principal when she was alone. When the principal heard what I had to say, she was surprised that such a thing had happened. Of course, he was angry at Amelia's behavior, but he also decided that he would give guidance to the teachers regarding their attitude. He understood that it was important to work together to find a solution to the problem, even though it was inevitable that they would say that what was impossible was impossible. First of all, it looks like the teachers got together and were given some guidance on this matter. They said that there are things that can only be solved by moms working together, but that they should cooperate instead of leaving everything to them. As a result, the teacher who had been refusing to help us decided to come between Amelia and I. At first, Amelia was reluctant to discuss the matter with me. I have work today, too. I don't like being called all the way out here all of a sudden. Amelia was giving off, wanting to leave energy right away. Which is more important, your work or your children? The teacher asked her that, and she became a little quieter. I always thought the teacher's words were harsh, but I'm glad she said it so clearly at a time like this. Mia is more important, but... People at work don't understand that kind of thing, and if I'm late, I might get fired. If that's the case, you should apply for night care. It costs money, but you can leave your child with us until 10 p.m. If you want to quit your job or change to a more flexible one, that's a different story. 
If you keep causing trouble for other mothers, they won't be able to help you when you need it. But if I have to pay for night childcare, then the reason I started working will be lost. You said earlier that your child is more important, didn't you? Isn't the answer clear then? I understand. I will tell them that I want to resign today. That was how Amelia decided to quit her job. I was so relieved, and the preschool teacher looked at me relieved, but also stunned at Amelia's responses. But it didn't end there. We decided to inform Amelia's husband, just in case. Amelia was reluctant, but I didn't want her to start working again without telling the teachers or the other mothers and pushing Mia to others. Her husband seemed to be surprised, as he didn't know anything, but it looks like he gave Amelia a good lecture. I'm sorry for pushing Mia. My husband got very angry with me about it. After that, my husband promised he'll take us somewhere when he comes back from his business trip, so I will try my best to take care of my child by myself until then. I'm really sorry for the trouble I caused you. She apologized to me. I was very surprised, but I was relieved. Well, if you really need help, you can rely on me. But I think Mia would like to be with her mom, so please be with her as much as possible. Yes, I will. I was only thinking about myself, and now that I've calmed down, I realize that I've become a dangerous mother. Thank you very much. Amelia seemed to have changed a little from before. As for me, the best thing is that Mia didn't get hurt. I don't know how long it will be before her husband comes home, and I can't imagine raising a child by myself, so I thought I would give Amelia a helping hand when she really needed it. Mothers are human beings, and they make mistakes too. If you can realize that and reflect on it, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Amelia is a normal person too, and she might have just been tired from raising her child. What Amelia did was abnormal in the eyes of the world, and it's not easy to regain her trust. But I think she can change that, depending on how she thinks and acts from now on. I hope she can do her best for Mia. As a mom myself, I feel that I should do my best for my child, too. This incident made me think about a lot of things. I want to avoid trouble from now on, but I'm going to keep in mind the phrase, we should help each other in times of need. I'd like to look at Amelia without judging her by what she did this time. So, I'll be devoting myself on parenting from now on.